Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Everything in this video was found on a public domain. Disclaimer down below. Love and many blessings your way. Big special thank you to my friend Catherine. I appreciate you so much. We got something in you guys. Okay, so if you haven't heard the latest, Megan's being called out left and right. Have you guys ever heard of the name Andrew Morton? He is a warm slice of dimple pie. He's also a biographer, and he wrote one on Diana, he did Megan, and here's what he's saying now. So after doing all the research and putting Megan's little biography together, he has discovered something very clever. He said she methodically chose every guest that took a seat at her wedding. She chose every big-time Hollywood elite that she could fill those seats up with. And he's saying these weren't like friends of hers. These were people that barely knew her or of her. I remember way back in the beginning, right after the wedding, we were talking about how she was adamant on getting Doria together with Oprah. And she pulled it off. In fact, Doria went and did some yoga with Oprah at her house, one of them. And Oprah left her with a sack of kumquats. What an insult. And to my knowledge, that was the last time Doria and Oprah hung together. I'm sure that disappointed Megan. Anyhow, on the guest list were the Clintons. Now, they didn't show up. Elton John was invited, of course. That's the Queen's little lapdog. Can't leave him out. But as we've all discovered, he comes quite in handy. All of her new Hollywood friends she had invited... She also invited the Obamas. They didn't show up either. Serena, Victoria and David Beckham, George and Amal Clooney, they were all there. Not to get off track or anything, but does Victoria Beckham bother anybody else in the world or am I just the only one? She truly has the personality of a casket. The big discovery is she knew what she had up her sleeve. This has been premeditated. To invite these people to her wedding would be to gain some sort of a bond with them instantaneously, whether they knew her on a personal level or they didn't. She knew the second she said, I do, the stuff she was going to create, and she knew she would have some pretty big name backers to support every move she made. If you don't know who Jodi Arias is, certainly look up that documentary. It's not that long. It's well worth the watch. The similarities are so eerie. According to Mr. Morton, all of this was an act of deliverance. She knew exactly what her plan was. She put her entire plan in motion starting with the guest list. And it's still happening. Except... All of these people that once stood and fought her battles, defending her, have you noticed them backing down? I think they're waking up. As soon as Pierce Morgan heard everything Andrew Morton had to say, he hopped on that bus. I would so like to think that Pierce Morgan can see Megan for who and what she is and not coming from a real personal, emotional spot if you know what I mean. I was told quite a while back that he was a little pained over the fact that some promises were made that were never kept. And for that reason, he's been anti-Megan ever since. And that little juicy nugget of info was being kicked around months ago, and we all have felt maybe Megan and Harry's people put it out there. And speaking of things being put out there, it was said today by the Daily Mail that Megan and Harry have turned off the tagged in feature on their Instagram account. In other words, nobody on their account can see any pictures their friends or associates have them tagged in. Now, you know that wasn't Harry's idea because he's not the one that runs the Instagram account. They say that Megan does, and if you go through it, she clearly does. Which makes me think, hey, she may have something to hide out there. She's not willing to have it linked up to where everybody else can see it. I wonder what that could be. Now, allegedly. Megan told Harry, 
right before the wedding that his family was the family she never had but always dreamed of. I'm thinking the royal family should have taken the letters her real family sent to them a little more seriously. It's now being said that Harry and Meghan's PR people are going around putting all of this junk, stirring up those rumors about Kate and William again. Remember how we talked the other night about the Barry Royal Christmas special on BBC? Where William touched Kate's arm and she kind of, you know, they called it recoiled back. And now all of a sudden, Kate and William have a rocky, strife-filled marriage. That's all over the media. And what was told to me, there was a mighty price paid to have that put out there. What a nasty way to treat the family you've always dreamed of having. I'll see you soon and we'll talk fast. Y'all stay safe and be blessed.